What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're we'll taking a look at a sleeper RPG that really people haven't been talking about too much, but I found it a few months ago and added it to my wish list called Banquet for Fools. It appears to be from the developers of Serpent in the Staglands, which I never got around to playing back in the day when it first came out. But having played around with the game for a couple of minutes, gotten used to the controls and whatnot, I'm actually pretty excited about this one. It's a weird RPG that's a little bit stranger, a little bit weirder in terms of setting and also gameplay than anything else I've seen recently. So we're going to dive on in, take a look at it, and see if you wanted to add it to your wish list or if you wanted to give it the old pass. If after watching this you wanted to get the game for yourself, I got a link for you down below in the description. It's in early access right now. On top of that, you can also take a look down there and you'll find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream. But let's go ahead and hit it. So here we are at the beginning of the title. Uh, everything in this game controls like Diablo. So if you just like left click, your character will move around. But combat is where things get a little bit more interesting because it is a CRPG where you have a full party once we get a little bit further on in. Uh, you'll see that we have different portrait slots right there. And everybody else kind of like auto battles and does their own thing. You can select them at any time to command what they do. But it's got like a hybrid real-time, almost turn-based system. Like it's somewhere in between those two points that I think you guys are going to find kind of interesting. And we can activate it at any time by right-clicking. Then we get this activity wheel where we can pick all of our different attacks and things that we can do inside the confines of battle. And while we're picking our attack, the game is paused. And our attack always has preference versus the enemy's attacks and so that's where things kind of get interesting and I've actually been really digging this little title so that dude right there we put him to the sword and down he goes the game also has like the Baldur's Gate style pre-rendered map over here like the pre-rendered map sprite thing I've been very very infatuated with this title we can hold down the control key and you'll see like items laying on the ground it doesn't really matter for the purpose of this prologue but once we get a little bit further on in, we're going to want to collect all that treasure. Uh, if you angle yourself right, you can get cleaves that'll knock people out and like put them to tat. Did it kill that one right there? Oh, that one just died standing up. All right, I can live with that. And then down she goes. We got a couple of like short swords on the ground, but I don't really need those. But I will never turn down liquor. So we've got blackberry wine. Oof, that sounds good. I'm not a big rice wine guy. I had a bad experience with rice wine. And ever since then, mm -mm, can't drink rice wine anymore. It just makes my stomach go, yer. But like blackberry wine sounds pretty good. Let's head on off to the left over here because there's like a little bridgey thing that we can follow off and across. And then we'll get a little bit further on into this prologue. But everything about the graphical stylings and everything else, very old school, very interesting to look at. And I kind of dig the combat system. I don't know the exact influence that it's giving me. Like my brain wants to say Vagrant Story just because of like the weird, strange imagery and also the sort of combat system that they've got going on. But it's not quite Vagrant Story either it's an interesting little title when it comes to the way that like throwing down happens oh that one didn't die either so i guess we've got like uh, bugged characters right now that are taking a second to fall over over we after we smack them shouldn't be that big of a deal but you know let's watch well she never fell down i'm guessing it has something to do oh there we go if i trigger my attack cycle she goes down 
That's how I can take control of the corpses of the dead. Hold! Hold, we are not spawned, but friends, priests of the goddess of spring and the only survivors from our tent, slay us not! Your eyes bear your innocence, but forgive me, I cannot linger. I must reach the castle. Then we will join you. Our lady was inside and may yet be. Come, together, we can stand against the spawn and reach the doors. I would be grateful for any aid. Follow my lead. And so as you'll see, these guys kind of like do their own thing and they've got their own equipment and the skills in this game are interesting. Like they seem to use all nature magic. Like I'm not sure if we're supposed to be sprites or if we're supposed to be elves or fairies or like what the hell we are. But uh, we've got like weird little bird feet. And then other than that, they seem to focus very, very heavily on nature magic. So like a lot of the magic spells are like vines that come out and choke out the enemy or you can summon like a horde of owls that will come in and attack everyone. And so I'm guessing we have some kind of affinity for the druidic magics or something like that inside the culture confines of the game. In addition, another gameplay style is that you can be a rogue. Uh, ooh, they summoned a whole bunch of, yeah, that right there, that was the spell I'm talking about. You see those white little flappers running around? Those white little flappers are the things that they summon with their little flute song or whatever. Uh, you can also be a musician in this game, and there's like a bunch of different pan flutes and harps and things that you can play. Uh, in order to give buffs and debuffs to you and also the enemies, I just looted some shepherd pipes right there. I think Viorian is going to need some more health, but I need to see if I can stack all this stuff up. And then I'll put it in my inventory right there, and then we'll just pass a jug of wine over there so she can drink it. And then if we could put a few more jugs of wine on each of these bars, just in case we get ourselves into trouble in combat, because we can click on these two to actively use them. If you want to see the abilities that your party members have available to them, you can take a look right here. And she's got Fumble, which I guess... It lowers the enemy's hit chance by roughly 30% for 7 seconds, and it triggers every 4 successful attacks. And then she's also got Slow, which lowers the movement speed of all enemies that she can play. And she's got like a little songbook inside of her inventory where you can find new songs and put them inside the book, and they'll get added on into the rotation. Same thing happens with magic spells. Is there anyone else down here in the spooky mass grave? There is. There is, in fact, someone here in the spooky mass grave. Yeah, you're definitely not going to smack me like that, so like back up off me. I don't know what that spell is that she's channeling on me right now, but it looks like my party members took care of it, so I don't think we have to worry about it anyways. Daggers laying around all over the place, but I doubt that's going to be a suitable replacement for the big old broadsword that we've got right now that we're lugging around with considerable heft. Nothing on the docks up on this side, but I think we have more conflict coming. The castle is near. Yes, indeed it is. And so this is going to be our first introduction to sort of like a big battle where you've got to pay attention and run interference for your guys. I'm going to do a quick attack right there because it recharges faster. And then over here, I'm going to help them out. Basically, I'm just going to try to cover the individuals in my party the best that I can. There we go. If I can keep the enemy off of my squishies because I think they're both like rogues, uh, that'll work out pretty well. However, I am eating arrows right now throw some damage out right there and then just kind of like try to avoid the enemy I think they threw a bomb or something at me right there another one bites the dust we're still not there on the priestess but we're like trying to get there uh, you go down get out of my face oh bat spawned it's gonna attack me they can also throw grenades and stuff so you kind of got to like pay attention to what people are emoting and what they're doing like in the greater expression of the game let's go for a critical attack on her that did half of her health, so that's good, but she might be healing uh, just because of what's going on over here. So let's see if we can drop the servant spawn, but then I need to avoid the bats, otherwise bad things are going to happen. That character just leveled up. Leveling up in this game, pretty simple. Uh, it's got like a Fallout-style system where everybody has like different skills over here on the right-hand side of your character sheet. Our character is obviously very, very good at Longsword, but you've also got your attributes up here at the top. They've got everything tooltipped. And so it's easy to kind of, well, it's not super easy to figure out how everything works, but like if you've played an RPG before, you'll be able to figure out how it works. But it is a very strange game that takes some getting used to. Uh, you guys want to drink some liquor? Get all healed up. There we go. Uh, level ups in this game, pretty simple. You just click on the level ups, and then it's going to add, it's going to give you a couple of like these gems that you can put next to the stats and the attributes that you want, and then they just go up by a couple. Uh, we don't really get any expression over here of like what this matters. You know, it says like at 180 acts, there's 49% of all skill use, and I don't know exactly what that means, but 
haven't dug too far into it just yet. Let me grab some of this vino over here. Just make sure we got lots and lots of alcoholic goodies. In case we want to party it up after we save the realm. And then onwards to the castle. Let's do this thing. Assault, I'm sorry. You have to leave us. We failed you, and we failed the Lady of Spring. I can resist his pull no longer. He's so strong and so near. Promise you're not going to leave us to this fate. Hunter, remember your vows, and let no pity stay your hand. On Quantateva's honor, I swear it. I absolutely love the synth wave and stuff that they're using here. It reminds me of old 70s movies. Okay, 44 damage is probably not going to do it. Ow, ate that arrow. Okay, she's now down. Let's kind of like run back for a second. I got to drink some wine to get some HP back because my HP is absolutely busted right now. The good news is, is that it's not very difficult to dodge the melee combatants. Like they tend to have like a long wind up. And so if you stay moving, you should be in good shape. And just like that, the friends that we previously made have been put to the blade. Sat down. Let's go ahead and we will move on into the castle here. Love the imagery, and I like how they've mixed pre-render sprites with, like, actual 3D models running over the top of them, too. It gives the game kind of like an old-school gold box feeling. Like, this game takes me back to playing RPGs on a Pentium 1 or, like, a Pentium 2 back in that era. Three hundred years later. Oh, Hold your tongues and still your mead. The Pavura needs four guards who will answer the call. And just like that, we get to make our starting party. A uh, character creation in this game, reasonably decent. Uh, you've got a couple different hairstyles, a couple different heads. Your stats change around based on your sex. But uh, we've got five races right now. Everything from yetis on into these guys that have snakes for hair. Like all kinds of fun stuff playing around inside here. I think these guys have some kind of like butterfly wings or something like that going on too. I don't know if it's like a fungus or what it is. But they've got something on their backs right here. Give me a second and I'm going to go ahead and create my party. And then I will introduce you to everybody in my party. And then we will carry on forth. And so the party has been forged. We have me, Splat. Uh, we've got our longsword skill over here and large shields. We're going like tanky, bro. We're going extra tanky. I don't know if I want to take pearl armor or if I want to take stonewood armor. It's going to weigh down our attack times and movement speed, but I'll probably just go with the scale armor. We've got Crash Nasty over here. She's messing around with multi-dual wielding daggers and lock picking, and we put everything into the stats there. Uh, we've got ourselves Cash Falcon. Cash Falcon, he's over here messing around with the bow. He's got, like, light armor, like leather armor, and then he can play the shepherd pipes as well, although I don't know how much mileage he's going to get out of the shepherd pipes with how he's doing right now in terms of his stat spread. The shepherd pipes benefit from sensory, which is kind of your charisma, and so doesn't have much of that. And then Dookie's over here. Dookie's our caster. Uh, Dookie's got spells like exploding frogs, uh, tangling vines, corp ne corpse nests, and also has robe proficiency, so we'll kind of see how that plays out as we go forward. Let's finish this thing, and let's do it. Make haste and follow me. The Pavura awaits you. Thank you, Mahal. It seems your call for volunteers has reaped a veritable bounty. You're new here to Invamona, but your faces are familiar. You served at my family's estate in Minarev, in the guard, or my memory has failed me most shamefully. Yes, my lord, we served there before asking to leave to join the guard here on Invamona. Your steady presence at the gates of my childhood home is as fixed a memory as its climbing towers and balustrades. 
I'm the Pavura, of course. I fear further introductions need to wait for my ship sails raise, and I'm every moment delaying the fleet's departure. I linger only to ask for your aid. What would you ask? A twofold crisis lies before me. House Renzen gathers to invade, and I must dispatch them ere they storm the Fortin. Trouble enough, but truly I'm being tested, for I've received reports for one of our farm holds, a most unsettling nature. Last week a peddler arrived from Din Varen's nervous and shaking, said that he'd gone to the hold to trade, but when he arrived at the gate, none ran to meet him, and in the town not a soul was left alive, or dead did he find. Uncanny, did he see signs of fighting? None at all. No destruction, no blood, a whole town disappeared with nary a trace of violence. I sent scouts to confirm the peddler's tale, and is that as he claimed. So this I beseech you for, travel to Dinvarans, search the town, track down the evil that preyed upon the gentle folk, and tell me, is this a task that you can undertake? Yes, my lord, Dinvarans will not elude us. You have my complete faith, guards of Lazur. My trust and hopes travel with you. Naught will stay us from this assignment. Do this for me, and rewards shall be yours. Land, wealth, title, and my gratitude. It will all be yours. Mahal will have maps and a purse for you, and his hands I leave you. He is at your need. I must away. Sella, guard your quest. Was that right there? Can I just have that, or do I get in trouble for touching this? Let me save first. All right, nothing bad happened, so apparently that was all for me. Uh, let's talk to the retainer. As the Pafura said, what aid I can give is yours. A boat will be wanted, I think, and land travel is safe enough to Din Varans. But should your investigations take you further, you'll travel faster by sea. Where will we collect a boat? Every boat in the Fortin was needed to ferry the Pavura and the army out to fight the Renizen, but there's a small sailboat still docked at the lighthouse to the north of here. Three of your fellow guards have the safe keeping of it there. I'll give you a note to commandeer it, lest they think to persuade you their need is greater. It is not, I assure you. And where is this lighthouse? You'll likely want to head east to the town of Rosafir, then follow the, no the road north. There's a path that heads north from the Fortin gates as well, but as wilderness cleanup is not your task, I wouldn't recommend it. You foxes can't slow us. Your comrades will thank you for it, I'm sure, but take the fastest route. Oh, I don't know why it skipped right there. I didn't touch anything. Oh, well. It was all just like pleasantries and stuff anyways. Let's carry on on out of here and see what kind of trouble we can get ourselves into. Oh, he did start out with songs. He can summon a raven, and it looks like I can summon a bat, too. Nice, dude. That sounds awesome. All right, so we're inside the barracks. I need to get back outside real quick. I don't know if there's any quests or anything else around here that we can get as, like, sub-objectives from anybody else. I love the, the billowing smoke off the sensors over here. I like the way that it appears. Uh, there should be shops and things around. They did give us money. So I've got 500 emeralds right now, and I'd like to spend those on something to aid the quest. So let's go have a look and see if we can find a place to spend some of this like king money that's burning a hole in my pocket this is an armor shop right here and as of right now we don't really have any armor this is probably the weapon shop though what do we have inside here we got like great swords short swords daggers spears scepters there's a whip do we have like a one-handed long sword because i want to use my shield it did say on the item description that there are one-handed long swords so this one's two-handed for right now, but I don't think I can do too much with it. All right, let's head back on out, and we can go buy some armor instead. That way we're as tanky as we need to be, because everybody else here isn't really like a frontline fighter. So it looks like it's going to be 149 for some crim scale. I want the pearl, so I'll grab that. I also need some robes. And I think I need whatever the light leather armor is for one of my other characters. So let's equip up real fast. I'm going to put this on me. And then the robes are going to go to not her. So he's got the crim scale proficiency. So we'll put that on him. And then in the case of this, I think we want robes on her. There we go. So now we've got her all nice and covered up. I don't know what all these little icons mean over here. It looks like it's their hit chances with various weapons and their recharge rates when it comes to, like, getting their turn back when they go into combat. So it should be fine. Let's carry on outside and see if we can find ourselves a little bit of trouble because I'm ready to rock here. Field assembly kits, hollow sticks. 
Hold, I have a message for you. The witch Valentina wishes you to attend upon her. There is no haste. She might be able to help you with her task. Where can we find her? She lives down by the docks. Okay, sounds good. I'm going to go the opposite direction, though, because my heart craves adventure. Shroomers at the gate! And off into battle we go once more. We'll get him with a normal attack. Unfortunately, my normal attack did not scuff him nearly as much as I wanted it to. I'm going to loot that real fast, though. Archer's doing work over here. See if I can get some cleaves off and kind of, like, cover my main party. There goes our attack bird. Oh, no, I've been vined. Do they have, like, a wizard or something in the back? I don't know what's happening here. I'm vined, though. All right, we'll get a little bit of damage off right there. You keep running. Don't stop for anything. There's another one down. Oh, sniper got him. Hey, where are you running off to? Come back here. Come on, Shroomer. Let's do this thing. Dude, I'm liking this archer right here. This archer does the business. Looks like there's a small chest key on the ground. I'm going to go ahead and grab some of these nails and stuff, too. I haven't gotten that far into the game yet, but it seems to imply there's a crafting system because when you mouse over some of these items, it'll specifically say, like, this is used to make arrows or this is used to do that. But honestly, I'm in awe of this. I think it was made by a really small team that was kind of just doing their own thing. And you guys know me, I like novelty in any game that bucks convention and kind of goes in its own direction and completely ignores uh, the common advice for game design of the day. I tend to like the really weird stuff, the Neo Scavengers, the Mech Engineers, like the strange games out there that just aren't like anything else. And as far as RPGs go, this has been an interesting little title so far from what I've checked out. I've liked what I've seen, so what is that? Ow, it smacked me. Back up. Meow! Uh, I'm going to need some aid over here from my party. There we go. Big hit right there for a fat cleave. You love to see it. We are getting XP for all these kills, by the way. The game doesn't do a great job of letting you know that you're earning XP, but we are getting XP for all the mayhem and all the creatures that were kind of action RPG fighting out here. Uh, you'll see up in the top right-hand corner, you've got your XP list right there, and we've got 45 out of 100 at the moment. Is there anything down here that could be collected that, like, those critters were guarding? Or was it just, like, a random combat encounter that we had to deal with? Might have just been a random combat encounter. Am I stuck? I don't know if I'm stuck right there. There we go. I can weasel my way out of this. Let's carry on in this direction. There's some blueberries over here. These blueberries, they heal 5 HP, so they're nice for, like, a little tactical snack in between. Oh, my God. It's okay. I got him. I don't know what he was. But I got him. He burst up out of the ground, and I panicked. I swung my sword, all right? I'm a little, I'm a mite jumpy. wonder what that key goes to. Now I'm curious. Oh, my God. Big cleave. Uh, big cleave did not lay them low as well as I thought it might. There we go. That one got a couple of them. And it looks like my archer's doing his thing now, too. Let me clean these guys off the squishies real fast. Got him. How's our HP looking? Uh, you can get a rough idea of the HP of the characters inside your party just by looking over at their portraits, which I will say are pretty small and hard to parse, but there's, like, so many abilities and things over there just in case you take control of one of these guys to make them attack or do whatever else that you got to kind of be careful about. Is that one of the exploding frogs right there? Is there anything else on the ground? A fang. All right, I'll take that. Let's get the fang, and we'll keep on clearing out map space here because I cannot stand Fog of War on my overall world map. I don't like it one bit. I've got to get every last shred of Fog of War off, otherwise I feel like I've failed in my duty as a Skinner Box Explorer. All right, let's carry on down to the south. They said to go east to find that other town, but I'm almost like, sure, there's got to be something good laying around over here. Can he not get over here? How do we get over there? I'm guessing we're supposed to be able to maybe cross this rubble before because I've crossed across the riverbeds before, but it's not letting me go right now. So I guess I'll just leave it alone. Okay, so we got some little frogman things over here. Ugh. Get him with whatever damage I can, although I am kind of like trapped in. The enemies do have collision and whatnot. But my real goal right now is just to occupy these dudes until all of my squishies and all of my other guys can get up here and assist with the fight. Although it doesn't look like my rogue's really going in at all. I don't know what she's doing. She's just kind of like sitting around in the back. My archer's doing a good job, and my caster's casting like crazy. What is that thing? 
like a bomb or something. I don't know what that is. I didn't want to be near it, though. I can tell him to stay back, but... Oh, my rogue just swung. Okay, I don't know what she's doing then. Maybe her aggression level is just not very high as an AI. Maybe she's more focused on, like, dodging the enemy. Either way, damage goes out. We're doing our out. Two damage right there. That hurt. All right, down they go. If you're wondering what these little candy cane meters are on every single character, the little meters, if it's full up and you and, like, one of your teammates are nearby one another and you attack, it'll do a rallying attack, which is like a big limit break where they combine their attacks and do, like, a bunch of damage. At least that's as far as I've been able to extrapolate what that is. And so as the meter fills up and you kind of, like, pick up momentum, you start to get, like, these big bomber attacks that you can drop on the enemy. I'm going to drink a little bit of liquor, too. Just to see if I can sort out my boo-boo wounds. Let's keep on chugging. Oh, yeah, everybody leveled up. Nice. Okay, so at level one, it uh, looks like we got longsword plus three, pearl armor plus two, and bartering plus one because I bought stuff. So it does look like you get kind of like a trickle of skills as well. I didn't notice that when I was fooling around a little bit earlier. I need to level up my longsword. So we'll throw another couple points into that. I don't know if I need to drop more into armor or if I can safely put it in other spots for like other things that I want to do. But we'll put it in armor for right now since we already have the armor equipped. I'll put it into shield as well. We're not really going to get that much of a bonus to it. Oh, I see. So that's the bonus you get if you put up one point in. Got you. So this turns into a plus four if we, if and only if we put it into longsword. That turns into a plus three. And if we put that into bartering, okay, fair. Well, then let's take that out of shield and let's get like a bonus point in bartering since I'm going to be the character that's buying stuff anyways. And then we get our stat upgrades. I'll probably go, let's go with strength, I guess. On her, it looks like she got better at short sword, so it was tracking something she was doing out there. Multi-hand fighting's looking good, and we'll throw the extra points into lockpicking. There are more skills than you can have on the four characters that you make in the game, and so I'm guessing that's for replayability. Go with... Oh, I don't know. A little bit of agility's probably fine. And then on you... We probably want our hit chance for bow. What is it? So on bow. Bows use dexterity to land hits and then strength for damage and agility for attack speed. All right. So we'll level you up and you got a plus three to bow, which is great. We'll give you a little bit more armor proficiency, I guess. Maybe a few more points in shepherd pipes. And then I want you to, like, fire faster, so I'd probably go with agility right there, just so you're quick on the draw. And then in your case, we want a few more points in Pagan, but the first thing we want to do is full... Well, yeah, we want Vine spells. We probably want Fauna spells. It might be worth it to put some Scepter skill in, too, so she starts leveling up Scepter. And then I think we want Pagan for magic casting. And I don't have anybody with intercessions, which I guess is for, like, gear or some kind of something. All right. A mortar and pestle. Well, it gave me purple stuff when I broke some of the things that I found. So I'm guessing those are crafting materials or something. Try it with the rest of these. So it doesn't look like I can crush that stuff up, but it looks like that'll patch armor. It says that's for making arrows, that's for making arrows, and then that's for patching armor as well. All right, let's carry on down the road and see what kind of trouble we can get ourselves into. I guess there's little, like, barking spiders or something down here. I don't really know what those are. A sand fox. Okay, drag him back over here. Nice kill. Almost got bit. Ooh, that bird got him right there. That owl summon, oof, tore that thing up for 33 damage. 
But I suppose I should probably get after my impressions and thoughts here because that always seems to take up more time than I expect and like more time than I allocate for it. I'm pretty in love with everything here. It's winning me over. It's a little buggy and I had some problems getting a fixed resolution to the game, but I reported that I couldn't get the resolution I wanted on the forums and the developers fixed it in under an hour with a hot patch. So if it happens to you, they seem to be really responsive on the Steam forums and actively interacting with the community and fixing things on the fly as people bring them up. I especially like the atmosphere and sort of odd world Abe's Exodus thing the game has going on. It's got very stark visuals that draw heavily from a combination of something like Claymation and older 3D captured sprite games like Baldur's Gate, Divine Divinity. Uh, there's some of the gold box titles, I guess, of your I like the visuals of this game. It stands out compared to everything else on the market. I also greatly enjoyed how they don't really explain stuff to you in this game. You actually have to pour through the stats and figures. You have to play around with the game because the game isn't going to tell you how to play it. There's no tutorial. That might be a negative for a lot of people, but I actually really enjoy going into games like that and being blind. I almost never use guides, manuals, trailers, tutorials, or anything else before I play a game because I like being lost in the sauce. I'm constantly in search of a game. The It'll just throw me into the deep end with show don't tell because that's a feeling I used to get when I was a kid before the internet when you just had to figure it out on your own like there was nobody coming to save you unless your parents were rich and could call like the Sega hotline or something which my parents weren't and so like you know you had to figure it out back then and that actually became a very real part of games for me that now as an adult I look for games that don't over tutorialize I look for games that just sort of let me feel lost for a little while and figure things out on my own but some people might really hate that I like the synth music they use it really sparingly though to accent things and it's very reminiscent of old like 70s horror movies which I also think helped sink in the dark sort of alienating vibe that the game is going for and so all in all I'd say my impressions as of right now are very very positive for this little unknown RPG that nobody's talking about, nobody's promoting, nobody's posting on Twitter about it. There's not a lot of scuttlebutt about this game, and I was kind of lucky that I stumbled over the top of it. From what I can see, there's a lot to like here. I love the overly embossed and filigreed menus, the save animations of books opening and unfolding. Uh, there's other little details too, like inside your inventory, the map that the steward gives you is actually a handwritten map that you can look at. And the missive he gives you that tells the guards to relinquish the boat to you is actually a little missive that you can open up and read. The game is full of little details like that. Uh, just all over the place and so that's the kind of stuff that I tend to look for in RPGs that make them feel very very immersive I there's I mean I liked the world and the characters the writing has a sort of old English Shakespearean thing going on that I think also like Ivalice uses in Final Fantasy Tactics it really heightens immersion I don't know what it is about people speaking old English but it makes your game feel badass by default it makes you feel like you're in a foreign world and that like you're an outsider here and that you've got to kind of learn how everything from the world of the culture works and I dig it I really look forward to seeing what happens in the long term with this early access because I think they've made something weird strange esoteric sort of on its own in an island when compared to the never-ending sea of Tolkien-esque RPGs that we always seem to get about dragons and dwarves and everything else. And so I'm interested in seeing more of this because it's novel and it's interesting, and I don't get novel and interesting very often. Maybe like once every two weeks I get something as novel as this, and so I get excited when I see it. Now, the few things that I bring up as problems are that friendly AIs don't seem to be very aggressive compared to the player character. You can fix that by commanding them manually to do stuff and taking over control, but I would like to see a series of comments combat profiles or formations that dictate the behavior of your characters because I've noticed that melee characters that aren't under the player control they tend to stand around a lot even though their action meter is full occasionally they'll run in and take a stab but when you compare them to the ranged characters and wizards they like blast and bust shots non-stop while you're sitting around and they match the player pound for pound for DPS so I'd like to see the other me melees help out with that a little bit along the way the game has a day and a night cycle and some of the dialogues I've seen seem to imply that different things happen during the day and during the night and so I haven't had a chance to check that out yet but there is a day night cycle uh, I found the crafting system and started playing around with that as well characters start out with a crafting kit if their class requires it that allows you to craft stuff and you do have to repair your armors and your weapons every now and again and so there's lots of little things here that have led me to really actually sort of enjoy my morning with this game uh, this is Banquet for Fools. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. That was it for today, but I'll be back tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. Take care, folks, and I'll catch you all there.